I knew you before I even came here. I knew of you. I'd never been in the barbers, but the barbers was, everyone knew Dom's Barbers. So, Adam. Yeah, the usual. Mm hmm Yeah, the usual, please. What is the usual? You never know what I do to you. No, I don't. I just kind of trust you to do it, really. Your mum sends me a picture of your hair that she wants, and I do it. No, you don't. <laughs> That's always the way it's been. No, it's not. Come on. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> You've had plenty of jobs over the years, haven't you? Not just this. I know, uh, loads of jobs. Yeah, too many. One day, a friend of mine was going for a job interview as a barber. And he didn't want to get the interview. He didn't want to go to the interview. He didn't want to be a barber. So I went into the interview and I got the job within seconds. We're cutting hair across the road from where your granddad cut hair. We have the most well-known load of barbers in Toronto. Yeah. His equipment is now in the window of this shop, thanks to your family, because things of that should be seen by everybody. Old stuff that people had collected over the years in their shops. And of course, I collect some stuff with there. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, so yeah, your granddad's barbering equipment. It's in my window. The comments in there, the old barber equipment, the old razors and everything. Um, it's not character, but it's not just museum. It's a little like Donald's show. You get lots of people. Stage. Like, they stand outside and they look or they might come in and ask, you know, where did they get this or where did they get that? And it's just a collection. Two little trinkets. Yeah. But not all the same thing. They're a bit different. Each one of them. Everything's a little bit different. And we keep adding to it, you know? Oh, yeah. 100%. Maybe I might just climb into a window myself. I'm getting old. <laughs> your ancient, your ancient relic. When did you start here? What year? I can't make sure I remember it's that long. I, I was working here for 15 years, I think. No way it was 15 years. 15 years. You've done about four days' walk in that 15 years, then. <laughs> that is very true. There's no way you've done 15 years. <laughs> Add up the hours you did, it's a week. I came to get a job off Dom, and I had to bring somebody to do a haircut, and I had to bring him downstairs and cut his hair in front of Dom to get the job. And even though it was really bad, we still yeah, gave it was a really job. Bad. It was probably really bad, all right. I wasn't cutting hair that long. We were desperate to fill a chair just for looks. Yeah. We couldn't get anyone with looks, so we just got Graham. And you had hair when you started here. Oh, I had got hair. I had hair that, when you started here. That, that, the, the abuse, the, uh, the, the staff bullying in the workplace, all the hair <laughs> fell out. Yeah, gave me cancer as well. What? I'm all right now, though. You, were here, you went here 15 I left and the, and the cancer cleared up. <laughs> Jesus, that's a long time ago. That is mad. And then, then the two of us started DJing a fusion. Yeah. So you had a really crap Friday night. I, start, I, I started the... DJing, but uh, the Dom was turning up with a few records, I think, a few CDs. So you had the cheap night and the Friday night, I was the superstar DJ on the Saturday that. night. I don't know about that. And that was, that was the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> Completely different styles of music. Absolutely. Mine was actually Shark music. And cheese. His was like no, a carol alarm no, no. going off. Basically, that was it, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, we are two different types. I actually mix music together, beat match them. Yeah, he ruined songs by cutting them in half. Press is play and stop. I, I used I to call him press play and walk away. I am king of press play and walk <laughs> press away. Press play and walk away. So I'm, I'm an actual DJ and um, <laughs> Dom likes music. Likes to play music in a public place. Yeah, I, I, I play music to fill a dance floor. Yeah, I play music to happy for long to drink book fast. Yeah, that's the difference, actually. How long have you been doing barber now? Uh, it should be 38 years. I remember learning how to cut hair here in Drogheda, and, and I worked in Terry's barber shop, which used to be across the road, um, just a few years up from your granddad's. And then I went to London, because I wanted to, to learn further, you know, do something different. Yeah. Move out of Drogheda, get away, see what it was like to do other people's hair from other countries. So off we went to London, and I was in London for two years, working in a really, really cool barber shop, in right in the west end of London. At the time, there was a crash happening in London, um, like a downfall in the economy. So we moved back to Ireland and opened up this shop, and that was in 1991 when we opened up this shop. So it was March 1991. So you opened it, did you, or was we, it someone else that opened it? No, we, uh, I, I opened it and had, uh, over the time, accumulated other barbers to come and walk in here. All great staff, trained some staff and got some staff. 
and um, we're here ever since. So I can't do the maths on that right now. Is that 22 or 33 years? 32 years. 22 years. 21, yeah. Yeah, so we're here that long. Didn't, didn't mean for it to happen, it just happened and, and, and we're still here. We were downstairs for about 15 years and then we moved back up here to change it all. You got bored of it. I thought if I'm going to be here for another 30 years, just keep changing it. Yeah? You know, because you remember being downstairs getting your hair No. No? No, God, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, I was up here. No, you were downstairs first. No, I wasn't. Yeah. How long are you coming? Ten, nine years. So we only moved up here seven years ago. So that's how bad your memory is. Bad, so if your memory is really bad, bad, you actually owe me 20 quid from I the last haircut. I remember you didn't pay me. So anyway, you took off out of here to be a, a superstar DJ yeah. and not cut hair anymore and we were so happy to get rid of him. No. It was like, oh, Place boy. almost closed as so soon as I left. <laughs> yeah, to shave something in the back of someone's head unknowns to the customer and let them walk out of the shop with it. That has happened. Leave the shape in here, so. Yeah, and then the customer will have to come back. How long did it take him to come back with that particular one? No, he was only in the lounge to send the next door. And, and he kind of scratched the back of his head and he felt this big lump of hair and he had to go back and get it fixed up. Yeah, that would be stuff that we would do. See, in a barber's, people slow down and speed up to avoid certain haircuts, you know? So if there's a screaming kid... We'd all slow down and you'd end up getting them. Have you still got them shorts? I actually have one of them shorts at home, yeah. Still, I'm going to throw one out, you yeah. Imagine that you kept shorts. Yeah, kept you one of them shorts. You do love me. Yeah. <laughs> you do miss us. Yeah. <laughs> See, we all rent our chairs here, so... Uh, I remember one time we were giving out about the, the, the price of the rent. So I, at home, I got one of my white t-shirts and I wrote, we want lower rents on the back of the t-shirts and big thick writing. And then halfway through the day, I just took off my shirt and it was on the back of my t-shirt. And he wore it. Yeah. yeah it was quite I still proud. have that t-shirt as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the rent didn't go down. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, they were good. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> Brilliant. Does it mean anything to you, other than just like, you know, your daily source of income? What yeah. does it actually mean to you itself? Does it have any significance past just being your barbershop? It's great. It's like, it's like, it's this building in the middle of the town where like, generations of people have come through families from granddads and dads and younger kids and nieces and nephews all, yes. all come in. So it's purpose, yeah. I suppose it's put all my kids in through school, mm. paid the bills, even the guys who work here. Most of them have kids, so this shop is putting all our kids through school and college. Um, so it has, that's the source of it, really, what what can do. And all those kids are, will hopefully do well out of it as well, you know. So it's like two families, my family and their families. All makes them survive, I suppose. A family-run business for families. For families, yeah. We've all got families and we all work here. It's great. So like one big happy family looking after our families. I'm looking after everyone else's families by cutting the hair. But that's what that's really what it's about at the end of the day. Pays the bills and make sure your family's okay. See, look, your hair's done now. Oh, it's fast, isn't it? You still have the same hairstyle we've had this last 15 years. Except your head just got bigger. Oh, did it? <laughs> I should be charging it twice. So, see? There you go. Look at that. Aren't you class? Back to normal. Oh, shit. Yeah, haven't lost a touch, have you? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs>